Assalamu alaikum. Ni hao. Welcome to China. Assalamu alaikum. I'm on my way to China. Looking forward to some amazing time filming some incredible stuff for you guys. I've ordered a special meal of raw veg meals. So it's raw vegetables full of nutrients and vitamins. I know it's weird, but that's just me. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Finally arrived at Shanghai Airport. Uh, absolutely exhausted. And the first thing I've noticed is the smog. Uh, you can smell the pollution almost. Um, probably what the world is buying and, and that's affecting people here. Uh, the, that's the first reaction. Assalamu alaikum, my first morning in Shanghai and looking forward to meeting brother Ibrahim, a local Muslim brother, a friend of a friend, who's going to take us for Jumu'ah to the mosque. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, but this is our view from the apartment. This is downtown uh, Shanghai. So what you call the equivalent of Canary Wharf or Wall Street. Uh, the second tallest building in the world is here as well. Uh, so this is really the center of Shanghai, uh, a massive, massive city, uh, which you're going to see soon, inshallah. So this is Brother Ibrahim who's going to be taking us around uh, the local area. So really excited to see where we end up. This mosque in Shanghai, this is one of them we're going to. And the Muslims normally are good at cooking food and selling food. So there's a lot of food stores every Friday here outside the masjid. So let's just check this place out. It's kind of Arabic writing, but uh, that's, that I assume says halal uh, meat on there. So you have uh, halal food from different regions of China, all coming together in Shanghai. Uh, so there's different types of food from different Muslims from different parts of China. Oh. Oh. like a hot pot. Oh, this is a beef. Yeah, yeah, beef. Mutton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mutton. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, sister. You okay? Uh, okay, okay. You're making noodles. <laughs> okay. How much All over China, they bring the halal meat to Shanghai. So it comes from miles and miles away. East Shanghai, uh, Pudong Mosque. So this is uh, the main mosque for the people of East Shanghai. This is Surah Asr uh, in Chinese and uh, Arabic and English. So uh, they're giving the dawah, there's a notice board just outside the mosque uh, for non Muslims to actually read about the Quran as well. So it's quite uh, inspiring to see this. So the mosque also has its own butchers uh, and over here you have a shop which is linked to the main compound of the masjid. So you've got a butchers and a shop as part of the masjid as it should be. This is the main hall for the Jumu'ah prayer and the regular prayer so you can see how it's laid out slightly different. The mats are spaced out. Uh, it's not that big uh, but it's still very very nice. We then made our way for the Friday prayers to Shanghai's most popular mosque. This is Hushi Mosque, the busiest mosque in Shanghai. And you can see a uh, recitation of Mishari in the background. Uh, quite amazing. I've been up to the top floor, uh, the first floor and the second floor. And there's a ladies area, there's a children's play area. Uh, you can take a shower here. Uh, there's food, there's a meat stall. Uh, there's a bakery, so it's more than just a masjid to pray in. And there's a melting pot of Muslims here from all over China that have come to Shanghai to work and they all come together here. It's really, really something to see. Outside every mosque it seems like there's a food area uh, that Muslims cook and a lot of non-Muslims come to eat here. So I'm just going to try some of the food here and see what it's like. But it seems very, very popular that every Friday after every prayer uh, there's a food market that goes on uh, outside most of the mosques in Shanghai. Try uh, some soup with chopsticks, try it sometime. I know how you're going to get the soup unless I drink it. Otherwise with chopsticks it's not going to happen. 
finally found a spoon, so I can't do with the chopsticks, sorry. Um, I'm gonna go with the spoons. <laughs> on our way back to the apartment, you can see Shanghai is a cosmopolitan city on par with any European city. These are the weirdest dates you'll ever see or taste. Um, they're a maroonish colour and they taste funny and dry. Um, mm. Can you see the texture of them? <laughs> We're now going to cross the Wangpu River to the old historic side of Shanghai. Take the ferry across the river uh, to see what's on the other side of Shanghai. Let's see how we go. Everything here takes so long, so people are so patient here, they just wait and wait. Uh, there's so much red tape, bureaucracy, things are not simple here, so everyone has to be really patient. So you don't see angry people, people just get on with it, um, they don't complain much, they just... I think they're used to just uh, doing things uh, in this way. Part of the, the city that's remaining from a historic point of view uh, is the Yu Gardens, uh, which is from the old dynasties from the 15th century onwards. So this is uh, history inside the center of the, the city itself. What we sometimes forget is China has a great Muslim history as well. Uh, there's so many aspects of Islamic history, Chinese Islamic history that we don't know about. It's quite fascinating to know about the rulers and many of them and their links even uh, from the Muslim countries even during Baghdad um, and Cairo the Muslims had good relationships with China and always have had um, throughout the times. And the love that they're showing us here the Muslims here is absolutely incredible they've made a full schedule for the two days that we're there in Xi'an and uh, they're gonna show us so many different things so I look forward to, to going there meeting the Muslims there and the great mosque of Xi'an and uh, it's going to be really exciting but the, the way that they've arranged everything for us is just amazing that the love and the bond between Muslims uh, around the world is just incredible. If you like your tea then this is the place for you because there's thousands of different types of tea here. So if you're a chai wala, dudh pati wala, this is the place for you. People here are worshipping different idols and personalities. Uh, something that has been done throughout the history of mankind and it's just been a deviation from what we were meant to do to worship the one and only creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is a religion of Taoism and it's clear that mankind and humans they have innate fitra to worship something uh, and then men have been led to worship things um, other than the truth. This is downtown Shanghai, this place is so busy, this is where everyone's shopping, buying crazy handmade hand crafts and eating weird, weird food. Warm, co warm coconut milk. Found another mosque uh, downtown, so I'm going to pray Salah here. I'm inside this historic mosque. Um, seems quite dark and cold and dingy, not many people around. Um, but uh, still, alhamdulillah, somewhere to pray. Mosques in China seem to have prayer halls and dining areas. Um, so they look like they were always historically uh, used not just for prayer, but as a social and communal space as well. I've been waiting years to find somewhere that can make sugarcane juice, and I finally found it. Amazing, alhamdulillah. I took the halal meat from the masjid and we cooked it and uh, ended up with like a with a Chinese uh, paratha type thing and stir fried the organic halal meat and some mayonnaise and uh, I'm gonna be a bit naughty and eat this with some salad. So it's five o'clock in the morning and we're getting ready for the bullet train uh, to go to Xi'an, uh, the Muslim area. Uh, so it's a two and a half or three hour flight to Xi'an uh, to see the Muslims and the mosque there 
uh, and really looking forward to it. So we're going to take the maglev train, the magnetic levitation train behind me uh, to the airport. The bullet train is just getting faster and faster and faster. Uh, it's giving me a bit of a headache. My flight's always right at the end of the airport, the last gate. I don't know why it's always like that. We've just arrived at Xi'an and our contacts are not here yet, so we don't know what's gone wrong. Uh, and we have no credit, no one speaks English, <laughs> and there's no Wi-Fi, so uh, there's no WhatsApp here or Viber or anything like that. Everything's banned, so they use WeChat and we have no WeChat, so we can't chat. Airport staff have kindly let us borrow their phone to try and contact Sister Fatima uh, Wu uh, and their contacts to pick us up. Just finished a very emotional interview with the local Imam, a young man, mashallah, who studied in Syria. In a Chinese rickshaw, uh, going to a Muslim family's house. So, it's, yeah, it uh, feels a bit funny, bumpy, and yeah, bumpy. it's fun, it's bumpy. fun, it's bumpy. <laughs> this is the great mosque of Xi'an, uh, a mosque that was built only a hundred years after the Prophet In 1974, some farmers were trying to dig a well and they found this one is behind me. Everybody, Muslim, non-Muslim, wants to be happy. Talk about pursuit of happiness. In Islam, in our deen, there's no pursuit of happiness. So I'm really sorry to shock you there. We have no search for happiness. We don't look for happiness. That is not one of our purposes. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't come, like you said, then we just continue. But we don't have a pursuit for happiness.